In this video, we shall learn what the Centers for Disease Control has to say about the management of a case of dengue. These are the latest guidelines given by CDC in the year 2018. What are the changes the CDC has to say? First, the CDC uh, stresses upon administration of colloids, for example, albumin, in patients of dengue who have fluid refractory shock. And the second thing is that it recommends the use of packed red blood cells or whole blood if hematocrit is increasing in face of shock. That is, the dehydration is persisting despite fluid resuscitation. You should give PRBCs of whole blood, suspecting there to be an internal bleed or a bleed. What you don't have to do is that you don't have to use corticosteroids. Don't give platelet transfusions just for a laboratory report of low platelet count. Don't give 0.45 saline, which is hypotonic fluid and would further lead to fluid accumulation. And don't assume that all dengue patients need IV fluids. Anyone who is MS1 positive is put on IV fluids. This is not right and this would in turn have detrimental effects. So this is what the CDC recommends not to do. So how do you assess or how do you suspect that the patient is having might be having dengue? First, the patient should have fever and second, should have two of the following signs. Symptom signs that is nausea and vomiting, rash, aches and pains, warning signs, positive tunicate test and leukopenia. So this is important that all dengue patients, all suspected dengue patients should have a, uh, should have a tunicate test done. What are the warning signs? The warning signs are severe abdominal pain or tenderness, persistent vomiting, Mucosal bleed, hepatomegaly more than 2 cm, a clinical evidence of fluid accumulation, that is serositis, lethargy, restlessness, and increase in hematocrit with concurrent decrease in platelet count. The CDC has now categorized a case of dengue. Earlier it was categorized as dengue fever, dengue with warning signs, and severe dengue. Now the CDC categorizes dengue on the basis of the management which is to be given to the patients. So now the patients may have dengue fever, dengue with warning signs, dengue with compensated shock or dengue with hypotensive shock. So in patients with dengue fever, they can be managed on an outpatient basis. Clinically, you must watch for and manage fever and avoid NSAIDs, watch for dehydration of fluid collection either of the two and watch for bleeding or any other warning sign mentioned previously. Laboratory you have to monitor basically platelet counts and hematocrit. Hematocrit has been stressed upon a lot in the current management guidelines. Now coming on to case management of a dengue with warning signs, these patients need admission and the patient should be assessed clinically about their fluid intake whether it is adequate or not. Obviously if the fluid intake is inadequate, you are going to admit the patient and obtain the baseline CDC and hematocrit. If the patient is in dehydrated but he can take orally and the vital signs of the patient are stable, you must permit oral fluids. Just because the patient is suspected of dengue or if MS1 antigen or antibodies are positive, you have to give him IV fluids. This is not true. So you can permit oral fluids to these patients as well. Second, Categorize second uh, thing can be the patient is dehydrated but the oral intake is very poor. In these patients, you should start with 5 to 7 ml per kg per hour of isotonic crystalloids and reassess after one hour. If the patient is improving, should decrease to 3 to 5 ml per kg per hour for 2 to 3 hours, then to one, uh, 2 to 3 ml per kg per hour and gradually build up the oral fluid intake. However, if the patient is deteriorating, then you have to increase the fluid intake to IV fluid rate to 7 to 10 ml per kg per hour for 1 to 2 hours, reassess and continue accordingly. For managing a patient of dengue with compensated shock, you have to admit the patient, assess the hemodynamic status and vital signs every 1 to 2 hours. Also, check the baseline platelet count, hematocrit along with organ function tests. This is very important. Now what is compensated shock? Compensated shock is one in which blood pressure has, is maintained even when other signs of shock are present to understand its symptoms. In simple terminology, compensated shock is 
maintaining blood pressure with other signs of shock poison that is the compensatory mechanisms of the body are intact to maintain the bp you should start with 5 to 7 ml per kg per hour of isotonic crystalloids and reassess after 1 hour if the patient is improving again then decrease the fluid accordingly to 3 to 5 and then to 2 to 3 ml per kg per hour with continuous vitals monitoring however if the patient is deteriorating then you have to keep a close watch on the hematocrit if the hematocrit is improving you should continue with fluid resuscitation maybe increase fluids to 7 to 10 ml per kg per hour for 1 to 2 hours reassess and continue tapering accordingly however if hematocrit is increasing then you have to give an additional bolus of 10 to 12 20 ml per kg per hour over 1 hour no not per hour it is 10 to 20 ml per kg of crystalloid bolus over 1 hour and again check the hematocrit if the hematocrit is improving this means the patient was responding to fluid resuscitation you must continue with fluid resuscitation only but if the hematocrit is increasing further then you have to urgently transfuse 5 to 10 ml per kg of ervc or so 10 to 20 ml per kg of whole blood and keep assessing the patient regularly now coming on to management of a patient of dengue with hypotensive shock again you have to admit administer assess a hemodynamic status and vital signs and check the baseline platelet count hematocrit and organ function tests hypotensive shock is one in which the body's compensatory mechanisms have failed to maintain the bp so now the bp is less than 5th percentile along with other signs of shock which are present in these patients you should start with isotonic crystalloid or colloid at the rate of 20 ml per kg rapidly in 15 minutes remember in compensated shock we used to give isotonic crystalloid over one hour but in hypotensive patients you can use use either crystalloids or colloids at the rate 20 ml per kg in 15 minutes remember this you should reassess the patient after 15 minutes If he is improving, you should continue with fluids at the rate of 10 ml per kg per hour for one hour, 5 to 7 ml per kg per hour for two to three hours, and then keep tapering accordingly. If, however, the patient is deteriorating, but and the hematocrit is improving, you should continue with fluid resuscitation at the rate of 7 to 10 ml per kg per hour for maybe longer time for one to two hours, and reassess and continue tapering or uh, continuing the same rate. with whatever your assessment has been if however the hematocrit is increasing here you have to give 10 to 20 ml per kg of colloid bolus over half to one hour again this is the difference in high, in, the, in compensated shock we used to give crystalloid bolus over one hour additional uh, 10 to 20 ml per kg of crystalloid bolus over one hour as an additional bolus here you are giving a colloid bolus as an additional bolus the same 10 to 20 ml per kg but over half to one hour that is relatively rapidly and if now the hematocrit improves you should continue with fluid resuscitation but if the hematocrit is increasing further you have to urgently transfuse 5 to 10 ml per kg of prbcs or 10 to 20 ml per kg of whole blood and keep assessing the patient regularly so these are the latest uh, guidelines for the management of a case of dengue given by the cbc hope you understood them properly Thanks for a patient listening. Thank you.